Welcome to Tony at 12. I'm Tony LeBlanc and today I'm in conversation with Deputy Chris Blinn of the States of Guernsey. Chris, good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you too on this lovely day. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? No doubt about that. We'd better tell the uh, the uh, viewers that it, we did this on a Wednesday morning rather than a Friday morning, just in case it rains when it goes out. But there we are. Chris, what attracted you to politics in the first place and leadership? Um, I think in my case, I've always been um, working in business and different types of businesses. So I've got an interest in whether the financial services, also um, you know, commercial businesses. I've been very much sort of a, what I call a social entrepreneur in that aspect. But besides that, I've been involved with things like the round table for, you know, for 14 years. I was air crew for air search. Uh, for nine years, I did um, you know quite a number of things. I was a douzenier. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so there were these were natural progressions, and and I've always wanted to get more hands on. Obviously, like many other politicians, you start off thinking, you know, you can change the world, you can do this, <laughs> and that, and then, then you learn about uh, the art of the of the possible. Um, so, so it was really it was a natural progression. Of, you know, when you really always like working with people, helping people, doing things, getting things done. It was one of those. Um, directions okay so that naturally leads me on to this question of consensus government does it work and we have seen a few examples both up here on a fairly regular basis and down with you now and again on taxation where it clearly doesn't work there's no other alternative though is that the party system didn't work did it well, that's it. I mean, you know, sort of being a, um, a inverted commas a newbie, as in my first term, you know, when when I first came in, I could see that the positioning of the states of Guernsey, there was a, a sort of a, a, a sort of quite a strong sort of Guernsey party, which had a, in effect the ability to 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 to, to win consistently on almost, a, you know, centre right issues points, you know, as often as it could. Um then we went through um, a change, and, and that was very much the. It felt like, and this is really my personal opinion, it felt like us and them going, you know, going going on there for a while, and then you have this sort of change. Um, and when we had um, the vote of no confidence, which was, you know, really quite a, a, a tough time after such a, a long period in in post. Um, from that point onwards, you you felt like I can see the the the, the roots of consensus now because you know we have a. Um, a new um, chief minister or, or, or president of policy and resources who's actually um, almost trying to work in a more sort of consensus, consensual manner mm. to make sure that he gets people working together, not because they necessarily um, uh, support something, but it's, it's engaging. And given the fact that we don't have party politics in that sense and, and we can't have an executive government, actually consensus is a very good way to avoid, um, you know, even at corruptions and things. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's a way that we have most of the people in that assembly have to, you know, 21 people. Now, it may come across as being very slow, and, and, and I must admit it kind of frustrated me in the past, but the more you get to grips with this, the more you realise this is one of the, 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 the safer ways. There can be improvements made, but um, that there is that element. A lot of people in the UK are saying the UK civil service seems to run the show. And indeed, they're um, talking about litigation about the go- against the government on Rwanda. Where does the Guernsey civil service fit into all this? Are you fairly happy that they do what you ask them to do? Um, <laughs> this is, well, uh, good question there, Tony. Um, look, I think it's that there are two two ways of responding to this. One One side is that... Um, you know, as long as you are doing, you know, in, on whatever committee you sit on, um, you know, it's working in line, um, then all is fine. When there is some sort of conflict, then there's a lot of sort of knowledge that comes from civil service, which which as deputies, you know, we benefit from, etc. But then it comes to situations like GP11, you know, one of the committees I sit on is planning. And, and then there was a real sort of pushback, um, you know, in effect against. And it wasn't only the requette for GP11 that took place. It was under the leadership of uh, Deputy Peter Fairbrush and on the um, sitting with him, Deputy Hellier, Deputy Mahoney, all were involved, all tried really hard to do the same thing as Deputy Dyke and his requerants did. But they were told, civil service said, you can't do this or the law offices, et cetera. Yeah. So there is this element of that, as long as everything's going swimmingly well, 
you know, it, it's it's all there. But when you do get these pushbacks, you do start to see another side. And we are visitors. You know, we're here for four years or so. Um, you know, they, they are there for a, a very long time. So it's so it's a little bit of a tricky one, depending on what the subject matter and the and the situation is. Chris, can we talk about your roles in the States of Guernsey? Because uh, you're the president of the Overseas Aid and Development Commission. What does that involve? So, um, well, I'll start off, interestingly enough, the, the reason I was taking this time for the interview is uh, as of tomorrow, I'm, I'm flying out to Kenya. Um, um, we are going to visit um, a number of uh, sites and places where we've had uh, aid going. There is a commissioner coming along. Uh, you know, our senior officer, but we also have, we're working with some other charities, so we're going to be meeting them there. So, um, you know, a charity leader from here, uh, others are already in Kenya waiting us. Um, there have been some tremendous, well, terrible storms and, and tremendously bad weather um, for the last few days. And also there's a bit of political unrest. So, um, so, so what we do, um, um, so this particular trip is really a, a, a site visit. I do want to emphasize to you, Tony, that this is paid fully from my own pocket. This is, you know, this is quite an important point that, you know, you, you can't yeah. have government money paying for this. This is really something that we would like to see and give support. But what does uh, Overseas Aid do? Um, we we work um, every year with our commissioners. So we're, we're a, 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 a panel of of six. The commissioners are remarkable people, you know, uh, whether they be doctors or specialists in NGOs or worked with mercy ships or have economic backgrounds. And we have, have fund funding rounds. Basically, uh, we open uh, the doors for applications from international charities with a, either UK or a Guernsey connection. We then um, look at various projects and analyze them. And then we agree um, an amount of funding that goes out to these sites. And then we follow through that funding. So with the compliance, the diligence and the, the site. So there's some very, some very specific uh, rules and, um, uh, you know, the diligence is very high. Let's put it that way. But the success of the work we do is remarkable uh, for the aid uh, we, you know, we give. And just on Bank Holiday Monday, we had uh, the World Aid Walk, uh, which is... Uh, was still a record of thirteen hundred plus walkers, that's and, um, and that's donated to five charities. And Overseas Aid does what they call a kind of a community match funding and doubles the the amounts. Because the key to Overseas Aid is to actually make sure the money gets to the people that really need it, isn't it? And there have been a lot of examples over the years all over the place where, unfortunately, it's got siphoned off where it shouldn't have gone. So it's good to hear that you keep a good check on that one. Now, you're also Vice President of the Transport Licensing Authority. Is that trains and boats and planes? Planes, aviation mainly, um, very, very, I mean, it's, sort of, it's a very, very inactive um, um, uh, committee because actually, you know, it's, it's those sort of uh, uh, lifeline, those routes, etc. We don't we don't have any change there. Um, there have been questions in the States about, you know, what is the purpose you know, of it? So so that one, I'm afraid, is uh, um, um, is 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 mainly because I'm um, vice president, I was being made vice president because Deputy Gollop was elevated to the upper echelon <laughs> of, <laughs> of the, the PNR. And so um, so I really sort of uh, um, um, took that place in support, you know. Of... But if, if, for example, your runway was long enough, talking about runways, um, an easy jet said, can we come in? You, you'd have a say in that, presumably, would you? Um. Uh, yes and no, depending on, on, on the, the importance of that route, you know, so because we have the, the, you know, the lifeline routes currently there. So there's there's really, uh, to be fair, it's not even on the radar because we've never yeah. kind of um, had anything in, in, in that area. OK, so that's something to watch out for if, it, if it's ever likely to happen. Yes. You're, you're, you're also a member of the planning authority. Um, and that's presumably a committee that deals with all planning aspects on Guernsey. Have you got an actual proper appeals procedure in place? Because we haven't here. Oh, right. Okay. So, so and it's a disaster. Right. Okay. So, so I mean, there is appeals, and it goes through the through the offices. But we also have, you know, for for example, when there's planning, we have the OPMs, the open planning meetings, and that's yeah. where. 
if there is a sort of uh, some some you know concerns and that happens i didn't um, i joined uh planning sort of halfway through um after one of the deputies um uh, left the post um planning i believe is probably one of the most um interesting or uh, or uh, you know active and sometimes contentious because we've just gone through uh gp11 now i don't know um tony you know uh, you know if 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 you you are um and and the audience of you your viewers are aware of gp11 but that was to do with building the the affordable housing where yeah. developers built up to a certain number um uh, putting in the rest and now we've been, in effect this is now being exempted and and we are truly hoping this is going to lead um to a lot of development of of construction of properties there um so um, coming, you know, in effect to your question, is there, you know, um, you know, what what can be done with with um, if there are, I don't know, inquiries or or, or, or questions or as well? It does go to the planning offices. It will come um, to the committee members where required, but. Um, but it's usually the open planning meeting is the one where we all get involved together. Yeah, but if if for example I make a planning application, you turn me down, okay? I'm in Guernsey, you're not here, okay? What's the situation? Can I then appeal it? Because in the UK, as you know... Oh, yes. Okay, yes. So, um, yes. Sorry, Chris. So, so you, you can, yes. My, my, my connection just um, yeah. had to be... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah don't yes, worry. So there, there is a, yes, there, there is um, um, an appeal process yes. which goes through the, um, the planning offices. Um, I, I would look, I'd have to kind of look at the, the actual detail of that because, again... Very often on these committees, unless you're actually directly um, involved in a in in an appeal, yeah. Um, but wherever there has been appeal, it goes through the offices, and then and we will have the um, the input where required. Yeah, because um, because as you as you know, in the UK, if the local authority refuses planning permission, you have the right to appeal to a government inspector who's independent and looks at it purely from a planning point of view, not a legal point of view. Now over here, the yeah. problem is. The committee perhaps will decline an application and it has to go before the Alderney Court for a decision. Now, with all due respect right. to the jurats, they're not planning experts and it's it's just a crazy situation. It really is. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I, I'd agree. And it just seems sort of a bit illogical because you have to really get to the planning officers to go yeah. through the, the motions. Um, um and I'm and I'm just looking at my at my notes just uh, because I am a um, you know and and the the processes um, and the planning panel and the tribunals are all sort of laid out on the on the, on our DPA side there. Yeah. So um, so it, it is all in in place there with the planning appeal forms and the notices. So, that, so there is the whole process they can go through directly through planning. Now the the next uh, the next uh, office that you hold particularly of interest is chair of the offshore wind group. So we're looking there at energy security as much as anything, aren't we? Rather than decarbonisation. Um, well, that that's a it's it's a mixed one there because decarbonisation cannot be ignored whatsoever from this. The the the, the point initially was the the group was formed. Um, the offshore wind group subcommittee of PNR was formed. Um, in a couple of years ago, in fact, under the previous uh, leadership, um, um, the idea was to explore the possibilities. The group was initially formed to look at uh, solar, um, wind, um, and tidal, um, mm. and um, uh, and myself and other other uh, members have been working on on the the various ones. But uh, uh, for example, there was Deputy Meerfeld, uh, and myself, Deputy Delisle. That, you know, they were, we were the sort of the ones who started on this this wind, and we wanted to look at to explore the possibilities. And as we know, um, you know, Jersey has been looking at it. Um, you know, um, the the relevance for us is that it's not just for Guernsey; it's for the Bailiwick. So, and that includes, you know, Alderney. That we, we have to have that ability to generate. But it's not just about generating revenue. It's not just about. Um, decarbonizing um it's it's all the possibilities the infrastructure that comes with it the possibilities for new new industry new opportunity lots of job jobs. creation yeah mm. lots of jobs at the maintenance side there um, but above all resilience we have the resilience for it we protect our um, energy supply 
um, you know, it goes a lot more beyond because we, with an interconnector, we could be almost you know, on the distribution side, improving everything. It's a great opportunity uh, for revenue and um, you know jobs, etc. How would you fund it? So funding for these um, um, historically works through developers. So 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 we are we will be making some um, some announcements, you know, relatively soon because we're we're looking for, we're going through stages. We we have to um, appoint with the specialist consultants, um, um, you know, uh, working with um, an industry. Um, these are all the sort of keys there. The developers, some developers have already approached us early days. So so that was uh, you know before we've even reached a tender or, or bid uh, or anything like that. Um, so the way it works is there are you know there there are different ways. There are CFDs. There are ways that. Um, um, the developers will look at the project. They will work um, in line with us. They will work with our consultants to, to work out, you know, identify the exact seabed area, the lease, etc. And from that point on, it's a consortium of funding that goes on there. And this is a, a project, you know, for many decades. Yeah. So the funding is, is 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 you know, and then they have kind of contracts on on the how the the power and the energy is will be distributed. So it's, it's it's going to be private development rather than the states of Guernsey actually putting money into it. Absolutely, the, yeah. the, I mean it, it, we're talking of figures which are well beyond the reach of of even our you know so sort of government funding. We're, we you know we're in the billions for these sort of developments, but these are developments which are going right across the the, the French the, the the continent coastline of the UK. You know it's it's the targets uh, for achieving um, energy are extremely extremely high. So we fit in. And the, and the timing is good as well because we also have some very good waters, which are you know really good, you know, good laminar flow. It's ideal for this type of uh, type of opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Um, coming on to um, finance, have you any idea what the Guernsey financial deficit is? Because it's a sort of you know put a finger and. And it's eighty million pounds at one stage, and it's more or it's less, and everything else. Does anyone really know how much you're short on it? Oh, that 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 truly is the the one million dollar or whatever value. Yeah, I, question, eighty you know? million dollar question. <laughs> That's right. Um, look, each time we are each time we are put in a situation, whether it be budgetary or um, um, I don't know, support for. Um, or Rini, or the hospital project, you know, you know, um, or GST when that was being debated, that those those figures are mooted and changed all the time. It has been nearly impossible. I, I, I'm even trying not to to try to put the finger on that number, but rather I'd look at the situation we're dealing with and 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 almost work around that because I, I honestly can say it's it's one of the most frustrating things. How is it possible? That that a, a government can't have the exact figure on there, um, and and whether it be the the accounting function um, or the statements from from one department or treasury, it, it you know it's varied. So I'm, I'm afraid, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's anybody's guess. But part of your problem is that you don't have an international accounting standard, do you? No, well, they they were talking of the IPSAS that's meant to be the transition going through there, and it, and even that now I've seen various challenges on that, you know, and that transition takes a while, and it it also kind of um kind of overlaps with yeah. the existing um standard as we go along. So and, and you know that one we're, we're you know we're we're still waiting on as far as I know, um to to find the the introduction the proper introduction of it. GST is dead. Um, I spoke to Heidi Salisbury a little while ago, and she she gave me the impression that you know it has got to come via alternative sources. Um, corporation tax uh, is it going to create a situation where big business leaves if you bring in a sensible rate? Right. Well, um, I, I I don't know if you've interviewed our uh, our new chief minister, but I know that he spoke about the. Uh... The one or two percent um, yeah. on income tax, now, which, that, which the Isle of, Ma Isle of Man's considering, yeah, yeah, correct. Which, which, which is interesting because usually, um, whatever we say, we always say we, but we, we can't go alone. We have to talk with our Jersey, Jersey counterparts, Isle of Man. Yeah, you know that's the usual route. Um, the GST, you know, wh why did that fail? You know, uh, um, you know, technically everyone knows that at some point a GST will probably, uh, you know, eventually be be brought in. Um, 
but it could be a complicated way, it could be a slow way. And, and we're also, the, the, the question should be and could be, are we spending in the right way? What we don't want to end up having is a tap, a tap that, that goes up, like, like we've seen happening in Jersey. So, yes, there, there are some impressive um, um, successes from GST in Jersey. You know, they can fund on certain, um, on education or areas or, 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 you know, put forward a lot of money for the, for the hospital, for example. Um, but if we have corporate tax here, one, it has to be aligned, um, um, you know, you know, zero ten has, has, has in effect had most of its day now. Um, yeah. If there were a, a tax of one uh, percent, you know, and, and you look at one percent equating to about 11 million. So two percent, 22. And, and again, those figures aren't exact, but that, that gives us an indication of what uh, what what each each um, 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 uh, percent will, will do. And, and that would not be probably the most popular route, um, but it would be the easiest because it could be put on straight onto an existing service um, of, of tax there is on the island. And, and it's equitable, isn't it, in terms of the fact that, you know, the richer you are, the more you're going to pay tax wise. And people at the bottom end who would have been caught out by GST, despite the concessions you were going to make on Social Security and income tax allowances, um, would uh, be in a better position if tax rates, um, you know, went up slightly. Well, the reality is, Tony, it, it's going to be a lot simpler because, as you mentioned, with the concessions that they implemented or they, they wanted to implement with the GST, they were they were interesting. You know, whether it be changes on food or the amount, you know, for, for on certain benefits, it, it was a very complex, you know, well thought out plan. But as you say, if you if you just do it on on a number then it won't have the, the benefits of saying, well, if you're um, under a certain income or doing this, you won't have that. Here, mm. it's just straightforward. And of course, the higher the number, the um, the better the percentage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I suppose the other alternative is to sort of say 20% on the first 100,000 and 25% above that, something like that. Do you think the electorate would wear that one? Well, the, the the interesting thing about the electorate is where the electorate sits. You know, the electorate is you and I. You know, so um, so so if if, if possibly if you if you're earning the lower salary, you say, well, yes, if these people are earning two hundred thousand, then then let them pay more. Yeah. But we also know that um, that on the middle income and upper income um, members of the public paying paying that, they're paying the lion's share of most of the tax in any case. So there's a there's, there should be a line, you know, um, where you know enough's enough, um, yeah. you know, where we increase the costs on a certain group, as we've seen on various um, things uh, recently. How soon do you think you're going to be able to thrash this out as policy in terms of deciding how you're going to actually raise this additional revenue to cover the alleged eighty plus million pounds? <laughs> Is that right. well, yeah. So, so first of all, you know, because we've had the three, um, you know, the three tries on the GST which have failed, it, it's going to take some time. We haven't got that kind of um, put into the um, into the agenda now for what it is, but that is definitely coming up. And and I know that we have the obviously the accounts to review the accounts um, uh, coming up on this one here. Um, so this this one, you know, I believe is still is still under planning, you know, for what we're going to do. But we have to do something. That that's clear. Where mm. We can see that by the the overruns on on um, um, HSC and and other areas. Um, a small thing, and it, it's maybe a long thing away, but that's one of the big um, motivators. You know, um, I believe well for myself and for others that if we can also succeed in the wind farm, although we're looking plus a decade away, um, yeah, we be looking now you know the old adage when's the best time to plant a forest today when's the second best time i'm oh, sorry 20 years ago the second best time is today this is how i feel about this we should yeah, all be looking at what and, we and, do. And, and this is a problem isn't it i mean uh, this isn't a criticism of guernsey but politics are short term five year cycles nothing gets done i mean look at the uk potholes and things like that you know when i was young you wouldn't dream of having those sort of situations but there we are um next question is should newcomers actually who paid no gy contributions make a contribution in the form of either a lump sum to social security to cover their health or alternatively effect an insurance policy that would cover the expenditure well, Tony, I'm a 
great fan of that sort of um, model. Um, if you look at places like New Zealand um, and other jurisdictions, they make that clear. And I think given the fact that um, population management has changed uh, quite a lot, um, and I will say for the good and the bad, it's simplified to a certain extent by removing, um, we, we have the short-term license, medium-term license, and long-term, MTEP, LTEP. We've remo removed the MTEP, which has allowed an influx of people to come in under the LTEP, which is the longer term policy, which allows them also to bring in dependents. Mm. And um, so we have that situation, plus the uh, professionals coming who are always welcome to come and work here, but they may may have um, you know health issues or, or, or family or dependents with health issues. And of course, this becomes an immediate burden on the, on the states. Um, and, and if you do the maths, I'm sure you'll find, you know, income, and 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 tax generated for the for the government against um, services provided um, and other costs, um, and and we'll see the sort of the deficit um, occur there. So 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 what you have just um, asked there, Tony, is something I do uh, believe, and I, I you know I've personally had numerous conversations on on how we could um, have a a, um, a different standard. And then very often we come across the the human rights, you know. Well, we can't we can't <laughs> answer that question. And, and, mm. yeah, and, and, <laughs> and look, and that same human rights was a potential blocker on the GP eleven, you know, sort of the the, the right, of, you know, of, of property and purchase. So, so you know, this is where sometimes we have to have a more kind of pragmatic view to say, but well, we're only sixty three to sixty five thousand people. We can't sustain these costs. Of course we not. Have to just take a more pragmatic view yeah, yeah. and. Let's let's work let's work around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the nineteen forty eight agreement between Guernsey and Alderney, have you looked at that at all? You know, I mean it's something that was supposed to be a temporary measure and is now quite old, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the 1948 agreement, of, of, you know, the the most I've ever heard about it was during all the debates where either relates to um, Alderney Airport or, or, or you know, all, all the data, GST, all the things there, because each time we, we talk about this agreement, which, uh, you know, I don't know how many people have kind of read it in detail. I've looked through it on the basis of identifying for the airfield, not an airport. There's an airfield, airfield, airfield yeah, one and airfield two, isn't it? Yeah. And it's yeah. from you know post war. It was a real support. I was you know even reading up on the uh, the the left handed gov governor of the time. Uh, um, um, I think it was gov left handed governor. Yo, um, um, can't remember his name. It also has a, the ale company. But there, there's a lot of interesting things in that period. But that was set up as a temporary measure yeah. um, to to assist and to help. And now we seem to keep keep on referring to it. If if it's something controversial, we say, well, we'll have to review the 1948 <laughs> agreement and go back to the drawing board. Well, you know, these naturally, it, it, it's reached its its time that a modification or a change has to come in, especially as um, the life between the islands has adapted and changed. And, and I'm a great fan of Alderney. I've always loved the, you know, I mean, I, you know, I believe that if we had the economy picking up in Alderney more, through transport, for example, and I don't mean the the controversial subject of a of a Rini, um, in that sense, but I also mean um, by boats. You know, why do we have these boats with twelve seats? And I, I have struggled and battled talking to various, uh, you know, the harbour master to see the ruling of, you know, the the, the why the twelve but not two hundred and forty like uh, uh, we do for Herm or for Sark. And, and I mean, we've got all the the pieces there. But if we had that increase there, wouldn't that have a direct impact on the economy um, on Alderney, which would allow people to to get there and then to have more income coming through and more business? You know, it, it's just a no brainer. Most beautiful islands got the most beautiful array of um, 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 German occupation, which would form a you know, it, it's it's the best kept, better than in France in the Normandy landing beaches. You know. Mm. Um, a very you know very, very special place but but the key to Alderney is connectivity and we're obviously going to skirt on Alderney because the old clock's coming down on us at the moment um but you know if if ha we can't expand Alderney if we've got an air service that is so inadequate and so unreliable i think in the southampton route 1 in 11 our failures, you know, due to weather or planes going tech or no pilots and holes in runways and everything else. 
and and you know if we could get the connectivity thing sorted out and possibly if you the states of guernsey perhaps could consider perhaps relocating a department over here or something like that that would make it buzz a lot better than it's buzzing at the moment so when you say a department tony what's what's your thought well you know for example motor licensing or something like that right OK, because we do have things like the game and not, not the states of Guernsey, but there's sort of e-gaming and there's some fiduciary and, you know, back office support companies there. But I, I see your point. Yeah. Well, that, that would fit with my model of, of, um, of you know, growing the economy by doing it more. But coming to the the, 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 the key part of, of what you just asked for connectivity, um, the one I, the one I kind of uh, think about there is, you know, we are still waiting the, the figures for the uh, for the final figures for the for the build for the airport. And we know that if it goes, you know, beyond the two point six million above the um, the twenty five or twenty six, so I, I haven't got the figure. To I hand. think it was twenty, uh, Chris. I think it was twenty five plus ten percent contingency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and then it will go back to the assembly to be debated. I mean, you know, um, my view, if, if 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 for what it's worth, is that the airport definitely has to be improved. I.e., the runway strengthened, the runway possibly widened. But but I'm but I'm not I'm afraid I'm not a fan um, of the ATRs um, coming in to land on there. I'm, I've got a you know a number of years of not many hours, but as a pilot, and and I'm, and I'm very much uh, you know sort of um, you know enjoy that. But that is not set for that. But there has to be an alternative. We can't a bit like the education system. We can't say well you can't have that, but you don't do anything else. Mm. You know, it, it, again personally, I, I think the idea of the, the, the pan island plains you know sort of um just going around the islands but coming back to a central one to guernsey to fly up to southampton or for medical you know with an early enough and correct enough timetable you know tony a lot of the things i look at tend to be more the sort of pragmatic um, you know practical solution um the, the the politics side which which obviously comes hand in hand um, yeah you know it's a frustration because i can see what we need to do but sometimes we're so set in our in our views and opinions on the way, it, it makes it quite hard. Chris, you're talking about the original Orini. Yes, that's Guernsey, right. Jersey, Jersey, yeah. Alderney, yeah. Alderney, yeah. Guernsey, Alderney, Jersey. Yeah. Um, you know, it worked well. Now, I mean, obviously the times have changed, but um, I I can't see how an ATR can make any money because you can only half fill it if you're going to come into Alderney, assuming everything yeah. went through. Well, you know, as you know from your experience in civil aviation, you need a lot of bottoms on seats to actually break even and even more to make a profit. So and, I, don't Tony, see, I don't see the saving. Yeah, and Tony, if one, if one cancels, bearing in mind if there are more passengers than two or three aircraft, you know, standard aircraft coming there, that means it's going to create a huge delay. Um, the weather will will have an impact, um, and and also let's look at Guernsey Airport right now, and what's the issues we're having with connectivity in Guernsey, which is meant to be the main hub, you know. Yeah. So we already have the issues, the issues there. So we, you know, we have to be, we have to sort of get our heads together to look at how we can do this, and and rather than the the, the key is is connectivity arena only. Look look at how it can be done. So and 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 you know, we don't want to always say it was better the old days with the, the no the, no no. But it, but it, agree but more. it was it was, uh, it, it was substantially yeah. better <laughs> then but there we are about, yeah hyd hydrogen air power you know sort of a hydrogen gas um aircraft you hear about this green air um you know th th this would this is something that could affect because ironically that the the aircraft that uh cranfield are looking at for the for the hydrogen um power uh, are actually on the islanders which were the some mm. of the best things we'd, we'd ever had. That's know? what they. That's uh, what Aurini started yeah, off with, of course, with Islanders, right, and, yeah. and they are sort of still in production. But um, yeah, it, it's 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 something. It's not as straightforward as just slapping down some more tarmac and trying to bring in bring in a plane that is right. obviously too big for the job. But there we are. Yeah. Well, Chris, we've just about run out of time, I'm afraid, but I've really enjoyed talking to you today, and thank you so much for sparing us some time. And you're off to Kenya tomorrow. That's right, and and it's been fascinating. So I'm, I'm I'm amazed at the speed of, of going through the questions and everything there. <laughs> well, we did skip That's a pretty... few, but don't yeah. worry. I'm sure yeah. Mr. McDowell won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me on your on your show and your program, and um, and I wish you a great rest of the day. Thank you very much. You too. You take care. Many thanks. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, then. Cheers.